to the students of NUS watching at Singapore and whoever else that's watching this video. My name is Sennojo Shigeyama and today I will be giving you a short lecture of what Kyogen is and how to perform this uh, stage performance called Kyogen. And about the history of Kyogen and other Japanese performances like Kabuki and Bundaku, Rakugo, No, and many many others. Uh, I think Dr. Lim will give you a, a short lecture on that. And uh, if I start talking about the history, then it's going to take a long time. So today, I, my part is pretty much based on uh, the, the actual performance and how to how to do this uh, performance. And uh, so before we get started, I'll like, I'd like to explain you a little bit about uh, who I am and my family's background. Uh, my family is called the Shigeyama Sengoro family, and uh, we are a professional Kyogen actors uh, group, and, and we are based in a city called Kyoto, uh, which is the old capital. Now Tokyo is the capital. But around 100-150 years ago, uh, Kyoto was the capital. And uh, my generation is the 14th generation, which means it goes back until like 250-300 years ago. And ever since then, our family has been doing uh, this performance. And my name, Sennojo, is actually a stage name. And uh, my grandfather was Sennojo II and his uh, great-uncle was Sennojo. And so, in Japan, in uh, stage performances, we have a tradition of passing on names. And so, the family name Shigeyama Sengoro, which is the head, the master of the house, is Shigeyama Sengoro the 14th. And uh, we used to be hired in a place called Hikone in Japan. Uh, it's around uh, in a, near a place called uh, uh, Lake Biwa, the biggest lake in K Japan. And uh, until the Edo period, all no and Kyogen actors were hired by landlords, which we call daimyo. And uh, we used to work uh, for just for the landlord. But after the Edo period broke and a lot of the things from Western world came in, uh, the system was banned. And so ever since then we perform on a stage for the regular audience and we sometimes teach students for a hobby to do, to do Kyogen. And that's actually how we make a living. So right now in this coronavirus thing, uh, I'm sure it's the same in Singapore too, but uh, a lot of the stages are cancelled and we, yeah, we were pretty much bored of it, actually, yeah. And so we're just doing rehearsals now, and sometimes we have lectures online like this, but uh, our, base, our base is, of course, uh, doing stage performance live, and uh, our home ground is called the No Theatre. And this, uh, I'll show you a picture here, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a weird stage, not like a modern Western theater. Uh, as you can see on the photo, uh, there's a roof on top of the stage, although this, this whole stage is indoors. And this shows that in the old times, this uh, stage called No Stage was built outside. Uh, usually at like temples or shrines and uh, the audience watched it uh, under the sky and there was only roof on top of the stage and uh, several uh, special things about this uh, stage usually a regular stage uh, is uh, the is usually like black or has very uh, little decoration, but on a no stage, you can see that there's a big pine tree drawn behind it, 
and that pine tree is said to be the uh, a pine tree that god of art, god of performance arrives and the real tree itself is actually still there in Nara prefecture in Japan and uh, this shows that in the ancient days performance wasn't for the audience or for humans it was a praise to the gods usually for harvest for good harvest or, or after we have a harvest and we get a lot of rice then we thank the gods and perform for the gods. So even though nowadays we perform for the uh, regular audience, we still have that spirit that we are showing it to the the spirits and the gods. Kind of similar to like uh, dan like Balinese dances and a lot of uh, the spiritual kind of performance left in Asia are still very uh, religious and has a strong uh, influence of the religion and uh, on this stage on the stage right uh, you can see like a corridor that is called the Hashigakari and basically all actors come out from that, uh, that from that corridor and you can see like the five colored screen that is called uh, Agemaku and uh, that's made of fabric and so people uh, bring that up and then the actors come out and once this whole stage is finished the actors go back into that to the dressing room and uh, in front of that uh, corridor Hashigakari you can s kind of see three trees those are also pine trees too but that is uh, kind of a, not only a decoration but you can s maybe on this photo you could see that the pine tree that's closest to the stage is slightly bigger than the one next to it and that one is slightly bigger than the one closest uh, to the screen and that is showing the audience that the actors come out from far away so when they get close to the stage actually the pine tree becomes bigger and you can see that the actors are getting gradually bigger and bigger and on the main stage, which we called Hombutai, uh, it's made of a special wood in Japan called uh, called Hinoki. Uh, I don't know, Google it. I, I don't know how to say it in English, but uh, uh, underneath this wooden floor, there is a big uh, how do you call it? A pot. There's a big pot underneath the, the stage, and that is used for uh, sound effects. When actors stomp their feet on the stage, which we do quite uh, occasionally, then uh, the sound vibrates in that big pot and makes a very large sound. So you can see that although it's a very simple stage, the ancient people, the old people who built this type of stage, uh, they use, they try to make the stage as uh, nice as possible, as elaborate as possible, even though it's made very simply just by wood. Okay, so uh, enough for the about the stage, and so I want to show, start showing you uh, different movements in Kyogen, but uh, as you see in that picture of the stage, uh, we don't use very big props and we don't use stage setting on the no theater so uh, whatever the stage setting is if the uh, story takes place inside a house or it, it takes place inside a forest or in the river uh, we, don't use, we don't make mountains on stage we don't make houses on the stage we just do it plain just like that so uh, we, uh, we tell the audience and we express where we are and express uh, different sounds and movements uh, just by our voice and our movement. So it's kind of like a, a pantomime with with uh, lines. So we use both our physical movements and our voice to show different parts of the the, uh, the stage. So uh, we'd like to go on first. I would like to show you 
uh, different movements in Kyogen. So uh, if you're interested and you're watching this at home or wherever, uh, and if you want to try it, then <laughs> I watch me do the example and you can stop the video and then you can do it at your home. And then you, you don't need any license to become a Kyogen actor, so uh, if you do what I do, <laughs> you can be a Kyogen actor at your home. So, uh, this uh, example that I will be doing is uh, Okura style Kyogen. In Japan, there are two styles of Kyogen, Izumi style and Okura style. And my family belongs to the Okura style. So, uh, if you look at the uh, YouTube, then you'll find many videos of Kyogen. But uh, if the family is different, or if the style, if the school is different, then we might move slightly differently. But, uh, so keep this in mind that it's a Shigeyama Sengoro Okura Ryu style uh, Kyogen. First, in Japanese uh, traditional performance, uh, all the performances had this thing called kata. And kata in English kind of means like form or like the way to perform. And so in Kyogen, of course, and in No and Kabuki, uh, there is a special way of moving and to do that sort of, uh, that traditional performance, uh, we act, move the same way every time. And so that's kind of what kata is. And there's kata for everything. First, I would like to show you uh, kata for standing. And so we don't stand on stage normally, just like this. Uh, in Kyogen, we stand like this. This is called the kata of standing, called kamae. Kamae means like kind of like a ready position. And so, uh, you can see that uh, my knees are very bent and uh, we, we make our backs very straight and our hands from the, the, the put these four fingers together and bend in the thumb and place them here. And so, whenever we're sta standing on stage still, we're always standing like this. And so, it, it's quite a tiring position. If you try, you'll know. But uh, so, in No and Kyogen, many times just standing on stage is one of the most tiring things. Okay, so from this kamae of standing, I would like to walk. A Kyogen style walk. This is how we do a walk. Other side. Maybe it's a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing because I have these uh, long skirts called hakama on, but uh, I am sliding my feet on the ground. This is called subiyashi sliding feet, and in Kyogen, uh, we always keep both feet on the ground like this whenever we move. And why we do this? Uh, there's a lot of uh, different explanations, so I'll just give you one, one of them. But uh, in the old days, Kyogen uh, used to be performed from uh, uh, like 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning to like 5 o'clock in the evening uh, without any intermission. And people had to watch the whole thing because the master, the landlord was uh, had a uh, whole was holding the whole performance, so if your landlord was watching, then you can't skip in the middle of the show. So uh, you get tired after a while watching performances for so many hours. And one thing that becomes tired uh, in your body when you're watching something for a long time, uh, for example like movies and YouTube too, if you watch it for so long, then your eyes start to get tired. So. Uh, to, to reduce your eyes from getting tired, the, the old ancient people thought, okay, so the, the, the ups and downs of the head when you walk normally, like when we walk, our hands shake and 
our head bump up and down. Uh, this kind of distracts the show, and this is one reason your eyes become tired because your eyes go up and down all the time watching them. So uh, they thought up of a way to reduce that. So uh, you can see that when I walk in this Suryashi style, my head moves horizontally, but it does not move diagonally. Like this. And not only reduces the tiredness, but uh, also it's kind of neat. It's not natural, but uh, the old people, the, the old people who invented Kyogen uh, didn't think of making things in, in a natural way. So they thought, yeah, why not do it in a more smooth way? And so that's how why they invented this style of walking. So, this is a Kyogen style walking. Now, something, uh, let's use our voices a little bit. Let's, let's do something vocal. Uh, in Kyogen, uh, we have this thing called a big laugh. We have three types of laughs. We only have three. And I would, I would like to demonstrate the biggest laugh. <clears throat> and this kind of shows what, ha what Kyogen is like. So please watch. So, that is a big laugh in Kyogen. Wasn't it big? Um, if, if you met somebody that laughs like that in real life, of course it's very strange. And, but in Kyogen, we make a very big gesture. When we laugh, we go, kneel, go down, and then gradually come up saying, ha, 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 ha. And why we exaggerate the movement so much? Why we do this so big? And on the web camera, you probably, you, you can't hear it so much, but we uh, speak out very, very loudly. Uh, why do we do that? Is because, uh, as you s I explained a little bit about on the no theater, the no stage, but we used to perform outdoors, and uh, people were like all around us, uh, some people were very far away, and especially the high ranked people, uh, the daimyons, the landlords, they used to sit at the very back of the stage. So, uh, for them to get what we're doing on stage, we had to make things very uh, large, we had to speak up uh, very, uh, very loudly, so that uh, they, the audience would know what we're doing on stage. So, we laugh very largely like this, and on the other hand, when we cry, we do, like, we do something like this. So, uh, laughing and crying, as you see, is a very totally different type of uh, expression, but it has a lot of things in common. For example, uh, the, basically what we're saying is pretty much the same. When we laugh, we say ha 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 ha. When we cry, we say he 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 he. So just the H A ha becomes H E he. That's pretty much the all the difference there is. And this is kind of what uh, what a kata means. This to make a style means. Uh, so. If you watch it for the first time without any uh, explanation, then probably you won't know what I'm doing. But uh, if you watch it several times and you understand what this kata means, what this movement is stand, stands for, then even if you uh, see a new play, a total new play that you've never seen before, uh, you'll know what the actors are doing. That's kind of the power of kata. And to perfect that and uh, to, to, to be able to do it more clearly and beautifully is one of the tasks uh, Kyogen actors have for ho ho their whole lives until they retire. Okay, so something else. Uh, 
we use, of course we laugh and cry, but we do other things too on the stage. Uh, let's do something more like pantomime-ish. Let's open a heavy door. Uh, like one of those uh, doors used for like storages, like a really heavy door. To open that, this is how we do it. Gara! 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 So, you can see that ha how it's kind of like a pantomime. We, there's no doors, and, uh, but we assume that there's a door right there, and we use a voice to express the sound of the door opening. Next, a uh, light door. We use something like this, uh, a fan, a Japanese fan. Usually, Japanese fans are more smaller, but the ones we use on stage, uh, of course, they are bigger, so the audience could uh, see it more easily. So by using this uh, fan, we open a light door like this. Sara, 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 sara. And let's try closing it. Sara, 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 sara. Patta. So the last pattern is uh, uh, locking or putting the latch on the door. And we use fans for say, uh, more uh, different things and uh, many, uh, many other movements. And we combine these kind of katas to make a one long play. Next, let's throw a rock. Uh, imagine there is a tree with, it can be apples or anything. There's a, there's a tree with, uh, it, it, with fruit and I want to take that fruit off from the, the tree. And so I decide to throw a rocket and to drop the fruit. Yet. So, uh, I don't know, if you, <laughs> if I didn't explain to you, maybe you, you wouldn't know what I'm doing. But, uh, you know, uh, bringing back the hands and throwing it. And although it's a very, uh, it's, it's not like a real mo realistic movement, uh, we have details that we have to uh, keep in mind. And uh, that is like, for example, when, when I'm throwing a rock, then where I'm looking at, which, which, which means there should be, there, there, that, that place should be where I'm throwing the rock. So my eyes and my hands should all be pointing at the exact same place when I throw, throw it. If this uh, is in the wrong direction, then it really doesn't look like I'm throwing anything. And so uh, these kind of details, uh, in Kyogen Kata, although we, it's very exaggerated, are very important as well. So now, uh, I threw a rock at the, 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 the tree. I couldn't get the fruit, so let's climb on top of the tree and eat it. This is how we do. Climbing a tree. Eat! 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 So, I'm on top of the tree and there's all these fruits around me. So I'll take one and I'll try eating it. Eat! Ow! 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 So, that's how to eat a fruit in Kyogen. And uh, I have to tell you that whether I'm eating a rice cake or uh, fruit or anything, uh, it's the same action and the same sound in Kyogen every time. So, ow, 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 ow. Every time it's the same thing. Now that I've ate, eaten uh, fruit, I'll show you something similar. Uh, in, in the old days in Japan, of course, uh, maybe anywhere in the world, but uh, there were less hobbies. You know, people didn't have many entertainment in the old days. So. Uh, when they want to have fun, when the adults want to have fun, what they do is they throw a party. 
So in Gilgan, there are many scenes where the, the character has a drinking party. They drink sake. So I would like to do a party here right now, a uh, Kilgan party. And I would like to bring in my assistant uh, uh, to, to do this party. So please come in. Okay, so this is my assistant Suzuki Minoru, and uh, he he wasn't originally from a Kyogen family, but uh, he came in from out, outside and uh, became a professional Kyogen. And our Sengoro family consists of like half relatives, the people who have this name Shigeyama are our old re relatives, and half of the people who come in from the other uh, parts, they're, they're, they become a profession after like 10 years of training. So, we're gonna have uh, uh, Suzuki-san and I am going to have a party right here. To drink and kill him, we use the fans again. When we open the fan and hold it like this, you know, there's all these sleeves in Japanese costumes, Japanese kimono. So, uh, to get that, take that away from the, uh, the to get it, to, to, to hold the sleeve so that it doesn't get in the way, and hold the fan like this, then it or, or, uh, automatically becomes uh, like a sake bottle, with full of sake. And the other opponent holds the fan like this, and it automatically becomes a sake glass cup. So, I would like to drink sake from them. Sorry! Oh! Sorry! Oh! Sorry! Oh! Sorry! 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 So this is how we drink sake. So we kind of gulp, uh, gulp air and make this sound. And uh, because we use fans, uh, it never runs out until you, you want it to run out. And uh, we can keep drinking. And he poured me a sake holding it like this. But after I drink, then I go straight into this pose then it means this isn't a cup anymore, this is a glass, uh, this is a, that's a sake bottle, and so I can pour him sake immediately. It's sorry. Oh. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. Oh. Sorry. 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 And now he can drink his sake. Mm. We can make the sake run out like this. Like this. <laughs> so when we, it doesn't run out until you want it to, and we can make it run out right away. So it's kind of convenient, and we can just by closing the fan and putting it back. Then uh, we can make the all the glasses and the bottles uh, vanish immediately. So not using props is quite convenient in a way if there are imaginations from the audience. Now let's do something different. How about uh, there are uh, uh, different types of uh, martial arts sports? And like maybe you know karate, yeah, and judo maybe. They're, those are all Japanese sports. But also, uh, I'm sure you know uh, typical Japanese martial arts uh, called sumo. So, ja uh, Kyogen style sumo. I would like to show you uh, taking a sumo in uh, in Kyogen style. Iza koi, iza airo. いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。いいよ。
of, uh, for example, there's like the National No Theater of Japan, which has uh, English pages. So, uh, not, if you come to Japan, you can eat sushi and you can go watch animation, but maybe uh, you could touch a little bit of Japanese traditional performance as well. Thanks. So, uh, finally, last thing, I would like to show you a one short piece of Kyogen. And uh, it's about 10 minutes long, but it's, uh, today I would like to do it a little bit differently. And uh, usually ky Kyogen, of course, it's done in traditional Japanese language. But there is this thing called uh, a bilingual Kyogen, which one person speaks English and one person speaks Japanese. And I would like to show you uh, this piece in that style. So, uh, there will be two characters coming up. Uh, master of the house and his servant Taro Kaja. And uh, the Taro Kaja will be speaking uh, English and the master will be speaking Japanese. And uh, in Kyogen, there are a lot of uh, repeating, repeating lines of the other person. So, by doing this thing called the bilingual Kyogen, uh, even if you only understand Japanese or even if you only understand English, you you'll get to you'll kind of get the what what the story is about and you'll be able to enjoy it. So this is something uh, my father invented like 20 30 years from years back. And uh, today's piece Shibidi or leg cramps is about uh, a person. The master tells the uh, servant Taro Kaja that uh, uh, there will be a guest coming tonight. So he wants the servant to go to a place called Izumi and Sakai, which is probably pretty far from wherever they live, and uh, to go get uh, food and sake. But Taro Kaja, of course, doesn't want to go, so he makes up that uh, his legs have a set sudden, have suddenly gave him a cramp, and so he can't walk. So he can't go to, to go to the Izumi and Sakai to do the chores. But of course, the master knows that Taro Kaja is lying, so he makes up a different idea. So this is what the story, basic story is, and I hope you enjoy the show. Thank you.
she has given me to go to Izumi and Sakai just for once is not a problem. However, to go there again and again every time she has a guest is a nightmare. I have to think quickly. What shall I do now? Oh yes, I have a great plan! I was just about to go to Izumi and Sakai when my legs suddenly gave me the cramps. Oh, 
type of cramps, and if I tell it to go away, it will go away immediately. I will do so. Hey, leg cramps, listen carefully. If I go to my master's uncle's party tonight, there'll be tons of good food and sake. You can come back any time you like, but please, for now, go away. Leg cramps, go away. Leg cramps, go away. Oh! 